Right now, the video game industry is booming. Sales of gaming hardware and accessories have spiked as consumers have been forced to stay home due to the coronavirus pandemic. One of the biggest beneficiaries has been Sony, maker of the PlayStation. Its stock is surging, profits are steady, and analysts predict its newest system, the PlayStation 5, has the potential to be a major hit this holiday. It's an impressive turnaround considering six years ago, Sony was on track to lose over $2 billion. The electronics giant was being outsold in everything from TVs to smartphones by more nimble competitors. Here's how Sony built its PlayStation business like a heavyweight boxer, capable of going 12 rounds to pull the company off the mat when it needed it most. Sony has been an electronics pioneer since its founding. In the 1950s, it was one of the first companies to build radios with tiny transistors instead of vacuum tubes. These transistor radios were small, portable, and became a massive hit for the company. It was built around innovation, whether it be the transistor radio, which was a very compact, easy to use radio at the time, the Trinitron television, uh, and perhaps most famously, the Walkman in 1979. And that really put them in the forefront of the global consumer electronics industry in their first half century. In 1994, the company leveraged this innovation to enter the crowded video game market with a new console, the PlayStation. They were not expecting you know huge things out of it. It was just kind of like, hey, this is kind of a side business for us. We'll launch a game system and see what happens. But the PlayStation had two competitive advantages under the hood. The console ran on a 32-bit microprocessor, a huge leap over the 16-bit processors of its predecessors. And unlike the rival Nintendo 64 console, it played games on CDs instead of cartridges. This allowed for games to be made cheaper, and developers flocked to PlayStation. So they released uh, thousands of games for the Sony PlayStation. There was something for everybody. There was just this diversity of content that you didn't find with the Nintendo system. Over the next decade, Sony gained market share, and by 1999, was shipping more consoles than Nintendo. Ken Kutaragi was the mastermind behind the company's new gaming empire. Ken Kutaragi, who was the head of the PlayStation business from the beginning, was a real maverick at Sony, wanted to run his own business, it sort of often clashed with other executives at Sony, and he wanted the machine with the maximum specs. He didn't want to uh, compromise on, on the quality of the hardware and the software. By the end of the 90s, PlayStation sales made up 40% of Sony's operating profits, and Kuragi began developing a new system that would be a Trojan horse of digital home entertainment. The PlayStation 2 was released in 2000, it featured a DVD player and offered exclusive online play for blockbuster games like Madden Football and Tiger Woods PGA Tour. All game developers were committed to Sony and they, they realized that was their bread and butter. And Sony was the system that was going to deliver uh, the money for them. That was until Microsoft released a gaming console of its own. Uh, for the first time, let me now unveil Xbox. The Xbox was released in 2001, marking the beginning of the modern console wars that saw Sony and Microsoft battle for gamers by offering exclusive titles and packing their systems with different features. Despite new competition, the PlayStation 2 dominated sales, eventually selling over 150 million consoles. But all wasn't well at Sony. Video game sales were growing, but profits were declining in other divisions. So many of their products either were commodified and it became the cheapest is the best, uh, or simply uh, were overtaken by technology. To cope, the company shed products and laid off workers. A company as big as this one with as, such a wide variety of product has to organize its priorities. We, we can't do everything. The PlayStation became one of those priorities. Kudaragi was placed as head of the company's next generation of electronics and tasked with combining traditionally siloed divisions to integrate PlayStation technology into other products. Sony was uh, looking at the PlayStation as a driver of their whole consumer electronics strategy. To pull this off, the electronics maker went all in in 2006 with its next console, the PlayStation 3. The goal was to make it the centerpiece of home entertainment. Sony spent billions of dollars beefing up the game machine with state-of-the-art technology. 
This included a Blu-ray DVD player and a new supercharged microprocessor called the Cell Chip. PS3! PS3! But the cutting edge console had problems from the start. Manufacturing complications with the Blu-ray player forced the release date to be pushed back, allowing Microsoft to grab a year head start with its new system, the Xbox 360. And the cell processor proved to be too powerful for its own good, frustrating game makers and gamers alike. Gamers, you know, they like games before anything else. And the PlayStation 3 was a game system with all this other baggage that made it cost $100 more. It was also difficult for developers to develop for the uh, PlayStation 3 versus uh, the Xbox 360. A wildly successful Nintendo Wii console and free mobile gaming cut deeply into PS3 sales. By 2014, Sony had suffered an annual loss for four out of the previous five years. Before, the company had used its video game business as a crutch. Now it needed to use it as a lifeline. They really felt that there was no other option but to really scale back those products that were no longer uh, profitable on a large scale and really focus on their winners. Those winners included image sensors Sony made for smartphone cameras and the PlayStation 4, which the company had just released. At that point, they really had no choice but to uh, put most of their energy into the PlayStation because it was the only product left in the hardware side with growth prospects. To recapture gamers, experts say the company focused on what made previous consoles successful, games. It expanded its online ecosystem by offering games that were free to play through its PlayStation Plus subscription service. And it allowed cross-console play for popular titles like Fortnite, meaning Xbox and PlayStation gamers could play together online. And Sony really just laser focus on the idea of gamers and having the best game system out there versus the system that'll do everything. By 2018, there were 34 million PlayStation Plus subscribers, creating a consistent gaming revenue stream for Sony beyond selling consoles, leading the company to post record operating profits that year. And by 2020, Sony's market cap had reached $100 billion, largely because of video games. So PlayStation 4 has had about 100 million unit sales over the life of the machine, and they say they want to exceed that over the life of the PlayStation 5 and also get off to a, a faster start. That fast start may be fueled by the recent rise in video game-related spending. But analysts say the new Xbox consoles will provide plenty of competition for the PlayStation 5. And for Sony to stay in the ring, the electronics innovator will have to keep innovating.